So yeah, appreciate all of you joining us today. Um, this is a combination webinar with both the Startup Grind Boston community and the Prepare for VC community um, coming together as the, the Startup Oasis. Um, we also partner with the Boston to New Technology Group who helps us promote and um, collaborate on all our events as well. And yeah, so really excited to, to um, host this webinar on crafting the, the perfect minimal, minimal viable product, uh, the MVP. Super important topic for entrepreneurs at every stage, you know, whether you're coming in to craft your first, um, first version of your technology or you're looking to improve an existing technology and test out new features. Um, so yeah, just to give a quick background and intro um, on both organizations, uh, Prepare for VC started as a um, startup support consulting and advisory company. It's transformed into um, Accelerator startup community and really a place that you can turn to figure out where to go next in your startup journey, what resources to connect with and who to get involved and learn from in your in your uh, entrepreneurial pathway. And um, Startup Grind itself uh, started out Silicon Valley. Um, it's got to be close to 15 years ago now, and it's transformed into 500 different chapters around the world, all hosting different events and promoting entrepreneurship to the local communities, learning from experts, entrepreneurs, and other speakers we bring in to enhance the uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystems. So yeah, really excited to have everyone involved here. Um, Want to welcome all of you to introduce yourselves in the chat, share a little bit about the startups or companies you're working with, um, get to know each other, and we can also use that for any questions along the way. And yeah, with that, I uh, definitely want to have uh, hand it over to Carlos and Alejandra, talk about um, or yeah, to introduce Globalis and kick off the workshop today. Great to have both of you here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I will share my, my screen. I am sharing right now. Uh, I don't know. It's OK. OK, okay thank you, Ale. So hello, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you, Prepare prepare for VC and especially Jason for inviting us to this virtual space. Thank you all of you for being here. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about MVP process and share with you some tips and guidance about, about it. About how the story start. Normally with a new idea, you come, up, you come up with a brilliant idea for a new app or digital product, but how to make it happen? This is the question here. So, well, you should let ideas turn into a promising MVP, especially if you are worried about saving time, effort, and of course, money. In other words, if you want to succeed with minimal cost and risk, you should consider, you should consider starting with the launching of an MVP. But I'm afraid it's not a piece of cake. There are a lot of things you have to deal with when you build an MVP software product. Today, I will share you, with you a big picture of the complete process based on 20 years of experience building software products. But um, to start, uh, who, who am I? Uh, my name is Carlos Quiroga. I am an entrepreneur by nature and passionate about technology and programming. Uh, I am the CEO of Globalis, a software company based in Argentina that have different type of companies and startup with innovate, uh, innovative end-to-end -end services. Uh, we help uh, not technical entrepreneurs and small companies to speed up uh, and do much more efficient in building their MVP. Uh, so before starting, uh, I would like, I'd like to know your expectation in terms of this presentation how Jason said, uh, who is attending today. Uh, so you are more than welcome to write about yourself and what you are looking to of this presentation in the same chat, please go ahead. While I'm speaking, I will read the chat in a second. But uh, to start, if you think of in terms of MVP, 
This presentation could be an MVP, and to be successful, I would have to achieve the expectation of all of you. So I have to make some assumption at the beginning, for example, like to assume that among us, there are different interests, uh, but all of you have a, a common one, that is MVPs. Uh, I guess you could be uh, an entrepreneur with an idea in mind. Uh, you could be an entrepreneur who is starting an MVP and you want to be sure about the building path, uh, or maybe an investor who wants to explore and understand better the MVP process. So I made this presentation without knowing exactly what you want. Uh, I will propose some topics I have, uh, that I felt could be valuable for you. And it will deliver this first version. And then uh, with your feedback, I would adjust some things, take others out because it doesn't add value. Therefore, the next similar presentation could be better. Um, and this is the concept around MVP, but with something more complex to be built. So I will take a moment in the chat. I don't know, Ale, uh, if there is some comments about uh, it's coming, but Please go ahead. Uh, just no, just just one comment from Marsh. Uh, he's from Stop Creeps, and okay. they are planning an MVP UIs. Um, Great. So yeah, I, I will put our LinkedIn uh, contacts. Okay. Great. So uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, these topics today. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, I'm going to talk about these topics today. Um, this is the outline. I don't know why I have. Oh, yes. Can you see uh, Okay, my, my screen? Yeah, we can. OK. Yeah. I'm going to talk about these topics today. There are a lot, but I will try to give you an overview of, of them. Uh, first, uh, MVP concept and misconception to be sure we are all on the same page. Then I'm going to talk about the process of MVP with especially focus on the development process. Then we have a, a session of QA. But if you have any question at any point, please, free, please, please feel free to write it down on the chat and I will try to answer it. Alejandra, the head of our marketing department here with me, will help me with this. So. Let's start. Um, I am sure you are familiar with the MVP concept uh, because you are entrepreneurs, but MVP means minimum viable. Account the step by step product evolution, keeping in mind user feedback. Basically, it's a software product built with core features to be validated in the market by early adopters. So the MVP concept in terms of software solution is an iterative so a problem uh, when you build a solution uh, and then you measure, you, you define metrics you want to measure and then with the resulting information, you will update your business model and your MVP. And the process start over again. But let's talk about advantages. Uh, I'm gonna bring uh, some advantages here, some of them. So um, the first one um, is say money. With MVP, you take a shorter path. You receive valuable feedback that enable you adapt your product and idea Perhaps you even leave away your product idea to avoid wasting time and money. I mean, negative results are also useful results because you can pivot your idea and go back to the drawing board and begin with the whole process again. Uh, allow us to prioritize the most important features. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, our company to be, allow your company to be more agile. Uh, all the MVP concepts are broad of agile methodologies. I can say that agile is a mindset that allow us as a team move quickly and easily to be willing to change and adapt. Also, we have ongoing improvement because you are constantly uh, in working in improvement. Um, also, we have finally um, advantages, last but not least, uh, 
advantages in, in pricing and cost and pricing because with the product working, you can validate your cost assumption and the price that people are supposed to pay. So I think that there are a lot of advantages. Um, so far, so far we have explored MVP definition and advantages, but let me share with you some common mistake and misconception around MVP. Um, so uh, the first one is uh, an MVP is a great way to make a quick profit. Uh, sadly, no. The purpose of MVP is mainly to test ideas and get them validated. So we are trying to ensure that the product development move in the right direction. But it's wrong to expect quick profits from an MVP. Of course, if, you, if your MVP uh, track user, it will be fantastic. Uh, nevertheless, you are only at the very beginning and a lot of iteration lie ahead and your MVP is the best tool to learn and um, pilot test your ideas. So um, the other one, uh, another misconception is I must build MVP as soon as possible. Uh, it's a very common mistake, jump into coding as soon as you can. Normally, this approach ends up in wasting time and money. The development stage is expensive. So before starting, you have to work in other important things uh, and follow a well-defined process. I'm going to explain which one in a couple of minutes. Uh, other, another one is I need to build the best and most complete version of my technology solution. So despite the name of a minimum buyer product, I mean, product could be a little confused in the name. We are not working in a product. We are working in a trial of my future product. So when we think about product, we think about software architecture, operations, server, maintenance, scaling strategy, reliability, and so on. Uh, we don't think deeply in these things uh, in MVP process. We normally roughly define these things Instead, we focus on validating all our assumption and understand if each feature plant will deliver a real value to our potential users. So this is a common mistake. Um, the last is MVP is about new digital product is also wrong because MVP could be also a new feature inside a software product could be a single big, uh, could be a big change inside a software process, not only a new product. So let's move uh, on to the process of building an MVP. Um, so before starting to dig in the process, let me say that there are a lot of way to build an MVP. Uh, there are different approaches. I mean, it's important to fit the MVP process to different scenarios. For instance, it's not the same when you work with a solo entrepreneur or a small company with business and technical people inside the team or even a bigger corporation with a lot of department and well-defined development process. Also depend on the know-how, uh, business ideas, stages, um, the industry, and so on. Moreover, uh, building an MVP is a complex process. Luckily, we have available frameworks, best practices, and many tools that help us to be successful, which is no guarantee, but ensure that this is a good start because follow with the final process, we are sure that we take time to dig deep in some details. We anticipate problems. We learn and validate all the time. and We decrease risks uh, at the time we are moving onward. So having said that, uh, most of the process uh, to build an MVP are based on these three approaches. That is the same thinking, it's a method Focus on people, which we use to explore complex problems and to find new opportunities. Lean uh, is a framework or philosophy used to explore and validate our assumption. To do that, it relies on a small experiment. Uh, it could be our prototypes and our MVP and expose them to customer in learning cycles. We are gonna talk about this in a couple of slides. And Agile, uh, this is basically a framework to be used in the development process. So we are going to talk about Scrum in a couple of slides ahead too. So in this presentation, I'm, I'm going to explore discovery approach because I think it's a great approach for building MVPs. So 
uh, let's go to the process of product discovery and what the process is like. Um, so here, Fred Brooks, uh, IBM's famous engineer said, the hardest single part of building a software system is deciding precisely what to build. And I couldn't agree more with this quote because uh, product discovery helps to figure out and is centered uh, around the problem space instead of chasing a future solution. So we work in this way, not in this way. So product discovery is based on people interaction and team work. The, Premise, uh, the premise is we design together. So the more people we can bring to the table to add value, the better result. So because at the end of the day, a digital product is a result of conversation, human iteration turned into software. So the process, this process has different stages uh, to, to the final where why you can see in the bubble here. Uh, that during our business model to define, to define what we are going to build, uh, to help us to prioritize these features, to define a small experiment, a validate it, which is our MVP and prototype, to discover risks. So we start plan how to manage uh, the risk, and we start our learning path. And finally, the final word, initial estimation, it could be a rough estimation at the beginning, but we can also refine this layer. So also this, uh, inside these processes, we have activities. I put the activities here to sum up. We have interviews, empathy map, story mapping, customer journeys. So I'm basically uh, running this process. We work in these things I put in the, to summarize in this frame, in this picture, we align we agree in the product vision, we agree on what to build, we agree on uh, and prioritize in futures and efforts. Uh, we research and gather information all the time we are researching. We work in ideation and creation and validation, and also we refine all the time. This process uh, starts uh, over again all the time, and we work uh, in this way, in this part of the process is very important. And the last things, uh, it's important that those process pile up uh, and are somehow related uh, with each other. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to work in a linear way. So you can run two of these process at the same time or even skip one and then go back. So it's important to say that. So let's move on. Um, and this part of the process, uh, this is our why, we work uh, on the idea deep, including as many details as you can. We refine the idea and validate it. I put here uh, to sum up the concept, uh, the golden circle that explains Simon Sinek in Tech Talks. We can see here that the approach uh, say that we have to, uh, you, we have to worry in the why first, then in how, and then in what. This is exactly we are talking about with product discovery. Basically, to discover our why, we use tools. So we, we guide us to answer. Basically, we have to answer what pain point are you solving? What is your market light? Uh, what kind of user will be interested in it? who are the people facing the problem. The goal is get to know your potential customer better than your competition does. Um, how can you help them to solve it? Basically, the final were famous painkillers. Um, what other products are on the market to identify your weaknesses and strengths? So this part of the process is really very important for the next step. I mean, um, you can develop a beautiful website with any bugs. But if no one is interested in using it, you will waste your money. So uh, I bring here two tools. Uh, one of them is Link Canvas and the other is Elevator Pitch. Let's take a look on um, Link Canvas tools. It looks like in this way. Uh, Link Canvas is a tool that will help us to mitigate risk and uncertainty. It is based on Alex Osterwelder business model Canvas. 
but is it the better approach for a startup and new ideas? Link Canvas is a problem solution oriented approach and focus, focus on customers. Basically, we have to fill in nine boxes. Uh, there is no fixed order, but it's normally fill in in this order. For customer segment, uh, define our market target problem we are facing, uh, our revenue streams, uh, our unique value proposition, where we add value, our unfair advantage, which is something special about your idea that your competition or competitor cannot copy. So channels uh, to reach potential uh, users, key metrics that we want to measure, um, cost structure about hosting, commercial, and so on. This is the idea here. Uh, this tool is, is very useful to easily communicate uh, the business idea to development team, to stakeholders. So again, we have to build this in an iterative and incremental way. So we start so with some ideas and then we can validate and refine uh, on the way. We have some online tools to do that. I put some here, Miro, Canvaser, Carbore. They are they great tools and has free plans. So uh, let's, the next uh, step is the what. Uh, or the bubble. We have the first bubble why, and the next bubble is uh, over what, what we are going to build basically. Uh, we have great tools to figure it out, uh, like story mapping uh, and prototype. Uh, the idea here is to work together with stakeholders and define the title task. So here we normally run interview with potential user, we design our story mapping. Uh, also we can build customer uh, journey uh, and with this, uh, with this information, we can move on, on on prototype and validate it. So let's talk about a little about uh, story mapping. Story mapping uh, enable using certain conversation, collaboration, and future prioritization to align and guide iterative product development. So you get feedback immediately with the interviews, and you adjust according to this because it's very dynamic, you can choose to solve the same part of the, of, the, of the product and not necessarily the whole process. Um, and then you identify users here, uh, you identify process and activities, and then the tiny task to achieve these processes. So you can, there are two ways to implement it. You can use uh, digital tools uh, like Miro or Carboar, or you can, do in a physical way uh, using posits in a bag, in a blackboard. So this is other approach. Um, and remember that uh, the information that we generate here will be key in the development process. So uh, the the first version of the future to be built that we call backlog, uh, we we use this tool to 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 build our backlog. So after this process. We will have a lot of valuable, valuable information. It will look like this way. We have the link canvas, we have the, our story mapping, we have uh, the customer journey or our empathy map. So we, we are ready um, to, start an, uh, to start our prototype. So, but something important here is about this graph. Uh, because it's a concept in, in Agile that the concept is called dual uh, track, uh, dual track. So we have two tracks. One track is uh, the discovery track we are talking about right now about this, this track. And the other is the delivery track. So the discovery track focus on producing, testing and validating ideas. And the delivery track work in turning those, those ideas into software product. And dual track in Agile enables product team to work on research and product development at the same time. This is a very important concept because when we build software, we are constantly discovering things and delivering and building the software at the same time, not like two separate process. So let's move on to the prioritization. Uh, in this step, we have already agreed on the why, 
the what. Uh, we have some detailed tasks, so we need to work on prioritization. Uh, there are several techniques for managing this. This is uh, some of them. Uh, let's talk about the first one is Moscow. Moscow. Uh, I choose that because it's simple. It's uh, an acronym uh, that stands for four category of initiative. We have the must have initiative. The must have are non-negotiable needs for your product. So you, you need to be included in the release. Uh, if you are unsure whether an item belongs here, ask yourself what happens if this initiative is not included here, or will this product work without it? So then we have the should have initiative. They should have an important requirement, but not vital. Basically, you should have add value, but we don't focus now, but we could schedule them for the future release. Then we have our could have. Uh, they, would, they, they would have a small impact on the pro if we left out. These are the, the could have. And the last, uh, we have the will not have. Um, this initiative are not priority at this time, so we only we take note about them just in case we change our mind in the future. So, a couple of rules of thumb. Um, this first one is that uh, don't allocate more than uh, sixty percent of the overall effort to mass have initiative, and the other is. Another is um, dedicate about 20% of your total effort to could have initiative. So uh, these two rules are very useful. Uh, again, this is a new instant to discuss, to agree and generate conversation about what we are gonna build. So let's talk about prototype. Um, here, uh, we dig deep in our ideas as we can without coding. This is an instant to try and validate without coding. So there are different approaches to do that. For example, you can draw any piece of paper like this. Uh, you draw screens, you uh, draw areas, you design a flow, a possible flow, you move on different screens. With this approach, you can validate information and validate processes. So maybe this is not the best approach to communicate, but it's useful as a first step uh, overall if you are not familiar with tech tools. So another approach is to use uh, mock-up tools, for instance, Balsamic. Uh, with this kind of tool, you can design a screen, flow a screen. This tool is very user-friendly and you can share with others in different formats. Maybe the disadvantage here is that the screen components don't like don't look like real, so you don't have a real UI because it's a mockup. But uh, I think that is still useful um, to level up your your prototype. You can use advanced tool as Figma or Adobe XD XD and build the prototype with real HTML component and styles. Uh, some to sum up this part, we can prototype on paper or clickable version uh, of your core future with the main goal of validation. You can use different tools depending on your knowledge, budget, and the audience uh, you address. So in this part of the process, uh, or this part of the process helps us to stand out important futures, uh, take unnecessary futures out, and improve other ways on user interaction and conversation. So um, let's move on to this uh, slide. So only a few comments here about the UX uh, and UI design. Uh, it is very important to focus on these topics in detail because the development process relies on detail and this uh, design can affect your uh, budget. So I mean, the components, uh, layout, the way that they are filling, uh, are, uh, we have to explore in detail. So UX and UI design is also an iterative and incremental process. For example, the first version 
of our design, UX design could be in this way. This is, we call uh, this image low-fi image uh, because we pay attention here in the IO, but not the IO and components and components, sorry, uh, but we are not focused on color and styles. And then when we validate with user and development team, we can move on on the final version that look like in this way. This is hi-fi version. So uh, at the end of the process of the UX and UI design, uh, we have an outcome, a complete outcome of a screen on a complete set of component, component like this, when we have colors, boot buttons, or icons, and so on. Um, on the other hand, it could be that the UX and UI is not your focus. So in this case, you can use a well-designed template, uh, which is a complete set of components um, that you can use and customize for your application. I put here a screenshot of a common template. Um, with this approach, maybe you can save money in, in, the, in, in this first part, but you have to keep in mind that uh, this template could be used by other uh, users. So this is the advantage here. So we are reaching out the development process. So let's go. Um, so far, we have been working on discovering and refining our business strategy, our clickable prototype, a list of features, uh, uh, time we work in time and cost estimations. Um, now we have to run some tasks before the development. So that are very related. Uh, these tasks I put here all together. Uh, I will start with the first one. This is set up a development team. Um, we have uh, two peaks here, uh, hire in-house teams or outsource the tech team. You, know, you can also try, of course, uh, a blend of these two approaches. But let's discuss about benefits or drawbacks uh, of both approaches. Uh, benefits. Uh, the first benefit uh, co could be cost reduction uh, in outsourcing because you assemble or disassemble it whenever you want and cost depending on the number of hours you consume is in timely basis. Also, there is a great value for money with near short services. Uh, we have access to expert and technical consultation, so you can answer to a world-class talent on any domain and get the job done for, uh, for you quickly and efficiently. We, we can ensure a partnership. You, if you are satisfied with the, your project, you can continue working with the development team or maybe uh, move on a mixed team. Um, some potential drawbacks could be know-how and know-how about technologies and the, the know-how about your idea too. So a couple of tips here. Uh, first, sign your uh, an NDA. Um, also, if you're not familiar with technology and your budget allow you, you can hire a software consultant by taking the role the, of the role of CTO and to audit the whole process. Uh, also, communication. Uh, we can improve it following an agile methodology. I want to talk about Scrum in a couple of minutes. Also, time zones are important. If you are working with different time zones, you have to assure that there are uh, overlapping hours during the working day. Um, and the last is quality, uh, because concern about over quality uh, are valid here. A couple, a couple of tips. Uh, first, uh, be sure you are hiring an experienced team. Secondly, use a well-defined testing strategy. Uh, we are talking about testing strategy. And finally, despite the team member could change along the time, try to keep the same team as much as possible. So we have great experiences as a provider. Uh, I really think that outsourcing your MVP development could prove to be a smart move, but let's move on to the other topics. Uh, this could be a thing of position. Uh, in small MVP projects, you should have at least the first two uh, 
backend and front developers and the role of scrum master or project manager depending on your approach uh, the other the other roles can be covered at different moment uh, in part and way so let's move on to the um, agile framework we have to pick one so we normally use uh, scrum to develop software there are others like uh, extreme programming Kanban, and among others we could talk a whole hour about Scrum and detail inside the process. But here I'm gonna brief you on the main concept of the Scrum framework due to the due to lack of time. But let's start. Uh, Scrum is uh, an empirical process based on three pillars. Uh, the pillars are transparency. Uh, transparency means that the process and um, work be visible all the time. This transparency enables uh, inspections. So inspection is aimed at inspecting frequently the progress. There are five events in Scrum to warranty that. I will, I will talk about the five uh, events uh, in a couple of seconds. Adaptation is the other pillar because uh, that allows the team to quickly adjust things uh, to get the proper outcome. So. This is the three pillar. Uh, what is a scrum in the simple way? Uh, look like in this way is we can see in the picture. This is, this, uh, is an iterative and incremental process. So I'm going to explain. So in a scrum, uh, value is delivery in a small and regular increment. We have the, the outcome here of the process. Um, we get stakeholder feedback to validate and adapt these increments. Uh, the task to be done corresponds to uh, all the features that we identified previously with all the, the tools. And Scrum called this product value. So here in product value, we have all the future to be built. Um, this is a, this is live. This, the, the, the product value is totally alive because we are putting things, removing things, improving, refining things all the time. So uh, in a Scrum, to explain a Scrum, I'm gonna explain the events uh, and roles. First, the roles, we have a team here. So the first role inside the team is the pro owner, is the person who decide we are gonna build. Uh, also, he's responsible for getting a stakeholder feedback. Normally, is an entrepreneur or a person who the entrepreneur put in this role, um, but it's only one person. It's important to say that. Um, also, we have the development team that is the people committed to creating the software. Uh, we normally have here developers, UX and UI designers, uh, QA people, and so on. And finally, we have a Scrum Master. The, the, this Scrum Master is the person who helped in making sure the process and removing impediment. So I put uh, this slide with all the roles, just in case you, you want to take a look. Uh, I try to brief the, the, the responsibilities. So let's talk about events uh, in the Scrum. Um, Scrum have uh, five events, so um, has five events. So we have a sprint. This is the sprint, the process here. I will put my mouse. So a sprint are the heartbeat of the Scrum. Uh, a sprint is a time box of one month or less where the team work to achieve the product goal. So. Another event is the spring planning. We have the spring planning here. The spring planning is conducted before every spring is attended by all the team. Uh, here through conversation, the product owner and the development team select items from the product backlog. So in such a way, the development team can deliver them in one single spring. So the list of selected items uh, is now uh, as the spring backlog. So we pick up a uh, feature of here and put here to this event. Um, so then the development team works on the spring backlogs uh, through the spring. Uh, during the spring, every day that helps to transparency and inspection, 
uh, we have a daily meeting. Uh, we call daily scrum this meeting, which is another scrum event. Daily last 50 minutes, and the development team answered three important questions. What did you do yesterday? Uh, what did you do yesterday? What will you do today? Uh, are there any impediments? So after that, uh, at the end of the print, and that part of the process, we repeat all the cycle uh, along the month or along 15 days. Uh, at the end of the print, we have two more events, uh, a spring review, which is, uh, which is a kind of demo of the future developed. The, the purpose is to get feedback and adaptation. Um, and finally, we have uh, other event, important event that is a spring retrospective where the team discuss on what went well, what went bad, and what could be improved. The goal is to improve the spring, which will be held in the future. So I only gave you a short explanation about the process because uh, the time, but uh, I think I, you can understand the idea. I put here the events, just in case you want to take a look about the complete goals and considerations. Um, so let's move on to the initial, um, the initial task that we need to run. Um, so this list, um, normally we must define a couple of things before I started the development process. It's good practice to define uh, this. Uh, I started with the tracking tools. Uh, I put the first slide. Uh, tracking tool, uh, it's important to define a collaboration tool that support uh, a Scrum framework because we choose Scrum, uh, where we can work as a, a, a team tracking and a team uh, a, a project tracking. So I mean, we need manage uh, team members, a task assignment, a status report, dashboard, and so on. Uh, there are um, well-known tracking software. I put some some of them here, uh, like Jira, Osana, GitHub, ClickUp. So. The good news is uh, most of them have free plans to get started. So here's uh, a screenshot of Jira uh, that when we have a backlog, uh, sprints, we can choose, this is our value, we can choose tasks and put it in a, in a, in a, in a sprint. So uh, it's a good tool to move onward. So let's move on to the next slide. Um, it's, um, software architecture. Uh, uh, in the MVP, we don't focus so much in architecture, but we need to define our free approach of this. We also need to define a database uh, and development stack according to the kind of software we are building. But what exactly architecture is, or oh, I'm gonna explain that. Um, Software is built in layers uh, or stacks. Uh, this group of layers uh, and their distribution are called software architecture. In the picture, uh, we can see a typical distribution of layer. We have first the presentation layer, uh, then we have application layer, and uh, lastly, we have data layer. Also, our software could interact with other uh, application or services and we normally call this part uh, as service layer. Uh, let's begin in, the, in this concept. So the first version in a conceptual way, we divide into uh, front-end and back-end. So the front-end presents user interface to people using the product. Here we have browsers, mobile device, IoT devices, uh, and so on, and it belongs um, presentation layer. So in this presentation layer, we have some particular technologies uh, like JavaScript, um, Angular, React, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, we have the backend. The backend uh, sits on the server side and is responsible for handling and coordinating data. Um, backend belongs to these layers, application layer in data layers and also service layers. We have here 
the technology like Java, Python, Node, on C Sharp, C++, and a lot Ruby, a uh, lot of technology here. And we think here in architecture, database administration, security, backups, and so on. There are two ways to design the backend. Uh, it could be a single big program, one program managing all the tasks called monolithic architecture, or could be uh, of a small and specialized program, a lot, a bunch of these programs called microservices. Normally, uh, MVP start with monolithic architecture. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good approach to start. But let me add some comment about the third uh, part services, because it's important to know that they can leverage uh, over development, uh, which means new startup could avoid reinventing, reinventing the wheel by using already available services. Uh, some common services uh, are payment services, yes, uh, to, to use, to, to charge, uh, but also we have other important services uh, like Out0, uh, Okta, that uh, are used to, uh, to use to security and authentication. So they resolve all the things involved in that part of the process. And it's very easy to integrate. Also, we have SendGrid, for example, to send emails, to send SMS or WhatsApp. We have uh, services uh, like OnSket that work with appointments, available availabilities, resources. Uh, I think there are a lot of a lot of free services uh, that we have to leverage our MVP. So they, they are free up to a limited, but normally it's enough uh, for, our, for our MVP. So I think it's very important to use. To sum up this part, uh, we have to define here uh, with the team, the architecture, uh, monolithic, for example, and the tech stack. Uh, the tech stack is the technology that we, I will use or the team will use to build the software. For example, I can choose open source technology uh, like React GS to the front end or Node GS to the back end. And also we choose uh, an open source database. Uh, it could be, for example, Postgres or MySQL. So also we can identify or we could use any API or services to leverage our development. So we had to uh, study uh, a couple of them. Um, so with this task, we are ready to, to start. So um, let's move to the testing strategy to, to talk about this important thing. Uh, it could be also a complete topic of this presentation, testing. Uh, testing is oriented to define quality standards, implement checks, and ensure that MVP meets uh, the MVP meets uh, this standard. So we can divide um, two big categories, uh, automatic testing and manual testing. Uh, and then we can divide in two big categories, uh, functional testing and no functional testing. In MVP development, we normally implement uh, these two unit testing and integration testing uh, in automatically way using libraries and software tools. Um, to explain a little about this, uh, unit testing is the validation and verification of one component or process written by the developer. But we, I, how I said is in an automatic way. For example, in a login process, the unit test automatically will check that the process managed properly. Uh, user enter, valid login and password, when the user enter an invalid login or password or when the user skip some of this uh, part and click in the, in the button of login. And then the integration testing is a kind of testing uh, when individual process are combined and test as a group. So we have tools to do that in, in, in automatic way. So I think it's a, a good approach to define this strategy before starting the development process. So let's move on with a couple of more uh, repository. Uh, another thing that the development team must decide is uh, where we will put the code. So there are a 
several repositories, repositories uh, like GitHub, GitLab, and many others. So repository could be implemented in a cloud base on on premise servers. Uh, we normally use cloud base. Uh, the high all of them have great features. Uh, they support full collaboration around the code. It's important because it's like a social network, but in code, uh, implementing uh, flow pipeline of operation, testing automation, and so on. Uh, also, we can use to backtracking to support branches, which are different version of your product. So uh, I think this, it's a good start defining which one. Um, then uh, other great approach is this DevOps um, because Agile, uh, DevOps fully support the Agile concept, because the concept of quickly delivery. Uh, DevOps is development plus operations. Uh, basically with DevOps, we automate the process of publishing your solution in a server environment. It could be a test, a production environment. We have several tools to implement DevOps. Um, they could be cloud-based or on-premise services, server, sorry. For example, Jenkins, Octopus, and many others. Um, there are two important concepts that I put here in this graph. The first one is continual integration. Uh, here, the developer upload, we said commit in, in, in development process, commit their code on a short period of time, one or two days. Uh, and each commit trigger an automated workflow on the server. So with these automated services, we can run testing, for example, and interrupt and warning to the development team when something goes wrong. Uh, this is very important to define and to implement before uh, start the development process. So um, then we have uh, continued development. Is everything is, is everything is okay? Uh, the process automatically publishes the, publish the solution in a server. It could be testing a producer environment. So uh, in the last picture, I try to put a typical pipeline of the DevOps when we build, test, deploy and put the solution in the server. And also we measure and validate it. So the last uh, a couple of seconds only, we have to define uh, the server implement. Where is the server? We have two, we have two approach, two approaches here on cloud basis or on premises services. Most of the case uh, we work with um, cloud based approach exists a lot of great companies that offer this kind of services like Amazon, Google, and, and Microsoft. Uh, so the important thing is we have, with these services, we could implement our services, um, gain flexibility or agility, and also are very flexible in, in terms of price because you pay uh, per use. So inside these uh, services, we have different kind of implementation that when we can uh, down our cost, so it's very important to analyze and to decide uh, where uh, or which one will be our approach uh, in relation of that. So thank you very much for your time, for listening to me. Um, so we have the QA session. So go ahead, please. Yeah, great, great job, great presentation. Um, we had some questions come in in the chat, but uh, I guess, um, yeah, I'll see if they want to ask them directly on stage here. Um, I know there was a couple from Marsh and um, yeah, a few others. If anybody, uh, Marsh, did you want to unmic and ask or should we um, go through the chat here? Yes, please. Thank you for your patience, uh, for staying oh. here until the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I, this is March. I had a question about, um, I, when I was doing my user stories, I basically was just doing like a Google Docs, you know, like if, when user does this, this happens. And is there a better tool? Because it looks like that you had more of a graphical tool um, in your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. 
So a software tool for users to mapping? Yes. Yes. Uh, we use uh, two of them. Uh, you can use Miro. I don't know how you're familiar with these tools. I can share a link here. Thank you. Uh, these have uh, free plans. So it's a great tool that have templates to run the link canvas. So also other templates, but it's a great tool. I will share with you the links uh, a couple of seconds. Oh, uh, here you are. This is a great tool because they provide you templates and some ideas to start. So you don't start from scratch. You use some well-known template to mm -hmm. an example to build the uh, the link canvas or also the um, the um, story mapping activity. I appreciate that because you know you get through it and you think, "What am I? What am I forgetting?" <laughs> you know? uh, I put I put yeah, the link in the, Oh yeah, they got to sign in. Now they have to they have to get the automation. <laughs> they, this is the right email or you know. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, yes. I forgot about that. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, you know, great question there. Um, and yeah, I'll open it up. Uh, I just saw Matt unmiked as well. Um, did you have a question you wanted to come up and ask? Yeah, I was curious. I've, I've heard it just over the last couple of days, um, a couple of people talking about the microservices and how it's better to develop the, the monolithic version first and then the micro. Can you explain why that is the case? Why it's better to start with the monolith? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with the, the approach of start with monolithic um, because microservices uh, takes a long time to design uh, because you have to think like isolate programs that resolve only one part. So if your application will be for thousands of users, yes, it's a good approach microservice because you can allocate in different servers and you can use different uh, resources. But at the beginning you, and, and the MVP uh, stage, you are trying an idea. So maybe it's not a good idea to spend time and money in this architecture because it's more complex to be built. And it's better to start with a simpler application that is called monolithic and then validate and try to scale up. And you, if you have uh, users and you scale up, you can move uh, uh, on a microservice approach. This is the, whole, the idea there. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Oh, thank you for your question. Great. Um, yeah, any other questions here? Uh, feel free to on mic and we'll bring you up to stage. Oh. Actually, we're offering uh, a free hour session. Yes. Uh, I, wrote, I wrote down our uh, calendar. So feel free to choose a date and we can help you with all your MVP doubts. Yes. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And if you want, you can share it with anyone you think they might need it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great offer. Um, yeah, so we're... So yeah, we'll follow up uh, with the recording, the slides, and the um, offer on the Calendly link for everybody mm -hmm. that came out today. And yeah, really, uh, looks like Marsh already booked an appointment with you. So okay. uh, there you go. Great, Marsh. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, yeah, great presentation. And um, yeah, appreciate all of your insights for our community. Great. Thank you very much, all of you. And um, thank you, Jason, for the space. Um, we are in touch. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.